In this tutorial, you're going to learn all about MailChimp segments and how to use them successfully in your MailChimp account. This is part of the MailChimp playlist on my channel. It's linked in the description down below. And in that playlist, you're going to learn everything you need to know to get up and running with MailChimp in your business. So make sure you check that out. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those down below as well. I try to answer them the best I can. If this is your first time here, my name is Bjorn from WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your customers, and for your business. And if you haven't done so yet, click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. Now let's get started. Segments inside of MailChimp are one of three ways to manage your contacts. The other two ways are groups and tags. I have separate tutorials for each of those, linked to in the card up above and the description down below if you wanna check those out. They're also part of the MailChimp playlist. Link to that in the description down below. That covers pretty much everything you have to know about MailChimp. Anyway, segments. To create a segment, go to Audience and click on Segments. If you have no segments, you'll see this cracked egg here. To create one, click on Create Segment. And this is basically a filter. It allows you to filter all of your contacts based on specific criteria to generate a subset of contacts that you can then email to. The only reason you'd be using a segment is because you want to send an email. Really, there's no other reason. If you want to organize your contacts into groups, you'd use groups. If you want to organize your contacts based on behaviors they've taken with your website or with your emails, you want to use tags and segments to use to filter contacts to send an email to, basically. So we can choose here, contacts match any or all of the following conditions. And we can choose tags, groups. We created these in a separate video. You might not have these unless you create these exact same groups in your MailChimp account. Merge fields, address, email, first name, last name, phone number. There could be more of these. If you added more fields in the form builder, those would appear here as possible filters for your segments. Subscriber data, including automation activity, which is under the automation tab, which you get in the paid version of MailChimp. Campaign activity, which is interacting with your emails. Contact rating, which is a rating MailChimp gives contacts based on their engagement level and interactions they've had with your business. Conversations activity is when you're using the MailChimp inbox, which is a way for you to interact with people who are replying to your campaigns directly in MailChimp. And you can filter based on activity in there. Date added, email client that they use. So if you send out different emails to different email clients, yes, that is the thing. You can filter based on specific email clients, email marketing status, info changed, landing page activity, language, location, postcard activity, sign up source, VIP status is an integration, but also other integrations under the integrations tab, which is this little grid right here, and email marketing engagement. So this is pretty much by default. The only things that are different here that aren't default, I believe would be favorite sport and industry segment. All the others should be in every MailChimp account because I haven't done a whole lot in adding extra content that would be filterable to this account. And so you pick any one of these. Let's pick campaign activity. And I'm gonna say, has opened any of the last five campaigns. I'm clicking these drop downs so you can see what the options are. There's a lot of different options and they change based on which of the criteria you choose. In the free account, you can have up to five criteria. So let's add another one. Let's add, for example, location is within 25 miles of enter something, Nashville, Tennessee, for example. And then anybody whose IP address that they used when they signed up for your mailing list is within 25 miles of Nashville would show up in this segment. I'm gonna go a little more high level. I'm gonna choose country. You can also choose is not in a specific country. You can choose specific US states, specific cities, specific zip codes or not within distance of US zip codes and is unknown is even an option. I'm gonna choose country and I'm gonna choose Canada. And we can add another one. In the free account, like I said, we can add up to five. I just wanna see just for fun, conversations activity, has replied or not replied to any of the last five campaigns. So this is kind of the same or pretty close to the campaign activity. Only conversations is actual higher level engagement because the campaign is just opened or clicked. Whereas the conversations activity is they've replied, which is someone who's much more engaged with your content than someone who just opened or clicked. And if you're finding this tutorial helpful, click the like button because that helps this video show up for more people on YouTube so we can spread the knowledge and help more people with this information. So make sure you click like if you like this video. So you can go through all of these different options here and see what kind of differentiators they have for the filters. Automation activity, started a workflow, completed a workflow, not started, not completed. 
workflow options here. And the free version of MailChimp does not offer the serious automation. All these ones are just simple one email automations that I created in previous tutorials. There's actually a card to that tutorial up above. There's a link to it in the description down below where I show you how to create an automated email that's sent out as soon as someone signs up and that's in the free account of MailChimp. So every one of these, any one of these, you can choose and filter based on the criteria. You also wanna make sure you choose the appropriate any or all. So if I choose any, that means that anybody who opened any of the last five email campaigns or live in Canada. If I choose all, then it's anybody who happened to open the last five email campaigns and they live in Canada, which would be a much smaller segment. So when you have finished, click on preview segment and there's nobody there. So I'm gonna edit my segment. I'm gonna change this back to any, go to preview segment, and now I've got some, some uh, test accounts here. Then I'll click on save segment. I'm gonna call this last five campaigns in Canada, click on save, and now I have a saved segment. If I go back to segments here, we see our saved segment right there. When I click on it, I see all the contacts in that saved segment, and then I can actually send a campaign directly to this segment. Like I said earlier, the only reason you'd be creating a segment like this is to send them an email. So we can choose to send them an email, we can choose to send them a Facebook or Instagram ad directly from MailChimp if you have at least 100 contacts within this segment. You can choose to create an ad that's shown to similar contacts as in your segment on Facebook or Instagram if you have at least 500 contacts. This is pretty much a lookalike audience inside of Facebook and Instagram. You can also send a postcard, which you send out in the mail. Pick any one of these, I'm gonna pick email campaign, and it starts an email, click on edit recipients. It shows our segment right here. And then we can send a very specific email to that segment, which is really powerful because you can segment down to exactly the people you wanna to talk to. It could be based on e-commerce activity. It could be based on their interests. It could be based on a combination of e-commerce activity and their interests. The segmentation is limitless, essentially. In the free account, you get to segment by five different things. And in the paid account, you can have advanced segmentation where you can segment by an unlimited number of criteria, including nested criteria. So you can get really complex and you only need that for big lists or very complex businesses with a lot of different product lines. So one way to send the email, like we just saw is from that segment list itself. We can also go to create, go to design email. This is the same place, only we have not chosen recipients yet. We can click on add recipient, segment or tag, and we can choose our saved segment right here. We can also create a segment on the fly without actually saving it. So if we come here and go to group or a new segment, we can segment people right here. We can say landing page activity, um, signed up on email marketing tips, PDF opt-in, and see what else we have here. Industry segment is coach and make this all. And now we have a segment that we created on the fly where we can email everybody who opted in for the email marketing tips PDF, who is also a coach. And this is a group, this industry segment. You may not have this in your account unless you created the specific group. And this allows people to self-segment themselves when they sign up for your list. I have a separate tutorial showing you how to do this in the card up above and the description down below if you wanna check that out. It's also in the MailChimp playlist, which you should be checking out as well. And then you can click on update recipient count and we have zero matches. So you wouldn't wanna send this email. The segmentation criteria are a little too specific for my current contact list inside MailChimp. And this segment that you add here is not saved. This segment we just created on the fly is just for this one send. The saved segment that we have under audiences this is saved and it's gonna be there forever. And I tried to look this up, but I couldn't find an answer, but I believe that these segments will update. So this one is dynamic by definition because this is the last five campaigns. Let's go to edit segment just to show what I'm talking about. So the criteria we have here is they opened any of the last five campaigns, but as soon as we send another campaign that any of the last five changes. So maybe today someone opened the fifth of the last five. So the latest one, the oldest one. By the time I send a new one tomorrow and they don't open that, they would fall off this segment because they haven't opened any of the last five. And so I, like I said, I couldn't confirm this, but I believe these update dynamically if the criteria require that. The location being in the country of Canada, that likely won't change. If you have location as country, that likely won't change on a regular basis. However, things like campaign activity will change on a regular basis and then your segments, hopefully, I believe they do, will be updated on the fly. So if we now send to this segment two weeks from now, it might be a very different contact list depending on which criteria we chose here. For example, 
if you were connected to the e-commerce functionality inside MailChimp, you can send an email specific to the people who've not yet bought your donkey training ebook. But then after you send that, a bunch of people are gonna buy it. And so when you send to that same segment two weeks from now, you're not gonna to wanna to send to those same people. You're gonna to wanna to send to a new group of people who have not yet bought it. Not new, some of them will be overlap, but the people who have bought it will be removed from the segment. And then then you're saying just to the ones who've not bought that product yet. So segments are very powerful. They're a way for you to manage your contacts inside MailChimp. The other two important ways to manage your contacts are groups and tags. I have separate tutorials for both of those in the card above and the description down below. So make sure you check those out. Next up, check out this playlist right here, which is all about MailChimp. I keep referencing this playlist in these videos and it has everything you have to know to get started with MailChimp. So make sure you check that out and also download this PDF right over here. It is the top most important email sequences every business needs. It's a smart PDF, so when I update it and add new sequences, they'll be auto-updated to your copy of this document, which is pretty awesome. And if you haven't done so yet, also click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss new future videos. My name is Bjorn from WP Learning Lab. Till next time, keep crushing it, and I will see you in the next video.